Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are gonna be talking about stacks. A stack is a linear data structure which can be implemented using an array or a linked list. Within this video, we'll go ahead and implement our stack using an array. So to get started, a stack has two main methods, a push method, which adds data to the top of the stack and a pop method, which removes and returns the data that's on top of the stack. This follows the principles of LIFO, which stands for last in first out, meaning the data that was last inserted on top of the stack is the first data to get removed. Because of these properties, an analogy often used to describe a stack is a stack of books. In order to add a book to a stack of books, I have to add that book to the top of the stack. If I wanna remove the last book within a stack, I have to first remove all the books on top first in order to get to that book. Now let's go over our stack init method. So our stack init method has two parameters, the size param being the size of the stack that we wanna create. First thing we're gonna to need to do is have a place for us to store our data. And as I said in the beginning of the video, we'll be using an array. Next, since we're either adding to the top of the stack or removing from the top of the stack, we'll need to keep track of the index of the top element. So we'll initialize top to minus one since our stack is currently empty. Next, let's go over our push method. Our push method has two parameters. The data param being the data that we wanna insert at the top of the stack. First step, we check to see whether or not our stack is full. We'll be using a convenience method called isFull, which we'll go over later within the video. If our stack is full, we'll just go ahead and throw an error. Otherwise, that means we have space to insert this data at the top of the stack. So right now, top has the index of the current top element. I don't wanna override that element, so we'll just go ahead and increment top. This will give us the new top index where we can insert the data at. Now all that's left to do is go ahead and insert the data within our stack. All right, so now let's take a look at this method in action. Right now I have an empty stack and I wanna push one onto the stack. First step, we check to see if our stack is full. It's not, so we move on to our else statement. We then go ahead and increment our top index. This will give us the index to insert our data at. Once we have the position, we could then go ahead and insert this data at the top of the stack. Pushing two onto the stack, we check to see if our stack is full. It's not, so we move on to our else statement. From here, let's go ahead and calculate the new top index of the stack. Once we've calculated the position, we could go ahead and insert this data at the top of the stack. Last example, pushing three onto the stack, we go ahead and check to see if our stack is full. It's not, so we move on to our else statement. From here, we could go ahead and increment top, giving us the new position to insert at. And finally, we could go ahead and insert the data at the top of the stack. Moving on to our pop method, our pop method removes and returns the data that's on top of the stack. First, we check to see if stack is empty by checking top to see if it's equal to minus one. The value we initialize top to within our init method. If it is, we'll just go ahead and return none since there's nothing within our stack. Now, what happens if the stack isn't empty? Well, first we'll save the data at the top of the stack. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and decrement top since we're removing the last item inserted within the stack. And finally, we'll go ahead and return the data. So now let's take a look at our pop method in action. We'll be using the stack that we created earlier when we were doing our push example. First, we check to see if the stack is empty. In this case, it's not, so we move on to the else condition. We save the data at the top of the stack, and then we go ahead and decrement top in order to remove it. Last step, let's go ahead and return the data from the removed element. Executing our pop method once more, First, we check to see if the stack is empty. Once again, this fails, so we move on to our else condition. We save the data from the top of the stack, and then we go ahead and decrement top in order to remove it. Last step, we go ahead and return the data from the removed element. So next, let's talk about some miscellaneous methods. We'll go over the getSize method 
the peak method and the is full method. The get size method returns the number of elements within our stack. We'll take advantage of our top index to calculate the size. Since we know our top index gets initialized to minus one in our init method, we'll just return top plus one to calculate the size of our stack. So when our list is empty, top should be minus one, minus one plus one will give us the size of zero. Next, we'll go over peak. Peak is just like the pop method. But instead of returning and removing the top element in the stack, peak just returns whatever is on top of the stack. So we'll just go ahead and return what's on top of the stack. Last method, we'll go ahead and talk about our isFull method. Our isFull method returns a Boolean as to whether or not our stack is full. We can test this by checking to see if the number of elements within our stack is equal to the length of our array. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.